those things is being able to have desire. You have needs. You can go to the mall and take care of them, and you can, you've got wants, but desires are very, very huge. It's very hard to know what you really, what, what, what you desire. The erotic desire, yeah. Well, some of that desire is what uh, the Greeks called pothos, which is an unfulfilled longing for the beyond, so that you always want more, so that it's never enough. And that feeling that it's never enough is nobody's fault. It's given with the figure of Eros. Eros had three faces, immediate desire of Himeros, which is uh, like physical wanting and immediate physical connection, and then uh, Anteros, which was uh, answered love, and love couldn't move unless it was answered, faced back and forth. And then the third one was Pothos, which was for the beyond. So that, and that's never fulfilled, and that occurs in, that's the kind of nostalgic longing for the unknown. And it may have appeared first when you were 14 years old, some, some extraordinary song that holds you, or some Beatrice for Dante, some, something that's, it's the great romantic longing. And that's a desire that creates the wings and is behind a lot of romantic art and music and and uh, the longing a fellow told me in one of these seminars a very interesting sentence he said the way the only solution for the longing for union is union with the longing very nice sentence the the solution to the longing for union is the union with the longing. See, we don't stay with the longing, we want it fulfilled. And the essence of the longing is that it can't be fulfilled. So your, your needs can be fulfilled, but not that, not that transcendent longing. So by staying with the... by union with the longing, realizing you are a creature of longing. The romantics said, tell me what you long for, German romantics, and I will tell you who you are. Tremendous sentence. We say, what do you do? <laughs> and you fill out your social security form, you know, or your tax thing. Tell me what you long for, and I will tell you who you are. They made a great deal of Sehnsucht, that kind of... Uh, Nostalgia, I don't know what other word to use for it, longing. And it's more than the desire that the French are using, this jouissance desire. I think it's something much more than that. If you're sitting alone at home, right. what would you be doing? <laughs> <laughs> Reading the newspaper, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Then, from there, how do you proceed? Just, just, uh, you mull, you, you, do, you mull, and you, uh, you uh, weep, and you call somebody on the phone, and uh, you make a note, uh, you turn it, turn it over, it's like mulling, you do what everyone else does. But in your fantasy, you're thinking literally about how do I make salt? Like, give me the recipe. And that isn't the point. The point is to have the fantasy that what you're doing makes salt. So don't worry about it. Just no, I didn't say that either. <laughs> Just let it go. Let it no, you still want it. You still want a literal instruction. You're still asking me concretely how. Now that is an American problem. The how thing. As a guy said the other day on TV, Americans are great at means and not very good at ends. 
In other words, we know how, how to do all kinds of things. We know how to multiply information endlessly, <laughs> but we have no idea of why, why all this information or what the point of it is and no criticism about it or anything else. We know how to do everything. And we ask always how. We are geniuses at application, like the Japanese are geniuses at miniaturization. You know, the Chinese invented the fan. The Japanese invented how to fold it. 